Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to our, this is our first uh, outreach event of the year. Uh, my name is John Alexander, and I'm head of school here at Rose. And this is my, um, this is my eighth year uh, as head of school here. And before coming here, I ran at different times. I ran two other schools at White Groves uh, that work with the same population. And really, its focus was both of these schools' literacy. So I come to you with that background. And before administrating at schools uh, White Groves, I taught for about six, 15 or 16 years literacy specifically. And during that time, I went back to grad school, um, really uh, for literacy and to get a better theoretical knowledge. So that's my background. What I'll talk about tonight is um, the crucial components of a reading program, a literacy program uh, for a school that I believe strongly in, something that I. We recently implemented at Grove, so I'll talk a lot about that. And incorporated within that is the five strands of reading. Okay? If you have questions, um, please don't hold them to the end. But more comments. Um, just as our kids do, just blurt them out. And, and that's good. Blurting is good because that means you're excited to learn. Uh, that's what I'm telling you about. Okay. Sorry, your presentation goes out. Um, so anyway, if you have questions or comments as we go through, uh, please work them out. And I'll just a caveat here. I have some pretty strong beliefs and feelings about the way reading needs to be taught in a school system. And it's not always a popular belief. So if, if you, you may be on the other side of uh, the continuum on this, and, and that's OK, but let's talk about that in private so we don't have to come to the or anything. <laughs> okay, so uh, the Reading Truth Part 1. We have to understand that reading is an incredibly complicated process, it's, and it's not a natural process. So when kids learn to speak, when they learn oral language, they do it through exposure, because they're exposed by language, surrounded by language, there's very little direct instruction in learning normal vocabulary. And there are um, proponents of a reading theory that all you have to do for children is to surround them with literature, read to them, and you, you really need not do any explicit instruction. And kids will read when they're ready to read, that the light bulb will go on at some point. And that's really a backwards approach to take. And we'll, I'll get into why in this uh, presentation. And I, I strongly believe that reading needs to be taught directly, explicitly, and systematically. And we need to use evidence-based approaches in the curriculum that we choose. Um, John Steinbeck in 1962 uh, said that he felt that reading was one of the most difficult tasks a human would ever have to uh, learn or overcome, and yet we have to do it as children, as 
as young as six, seven, or eight years old. Hopefully by the time uh, a child is nine, he is reading. He is reading fluently. He can decode the words off the page. That's an incredibly complicated neurological process uh, to master that. Part two of the reading, we really aren't very good at teaching reading here in Minnesota. As 65% of our fourth graders don't read proficiently. And 30% don't have basic reading skills. So what I mean about reading proficiently, it's reading for comprehension. The reason we read, to read to understand something. And we really don't, our kids don't do that well in fourth grade. Um, basic reading skills, just being able to decode a word, being able to read a word off a page, 30% of the kids can't do that. Now, it's not only are we poor at teaching reading in Minnesota, this is a national tragedy. It's, it's really, um, we're right in the middle of the pack in terms of, of this statistic. And the reading truth part three, it's not the teachers. Teachers aren't to blame because you don't know what you don't know. And unfortunately, and this is another strong bias I have, because I think teachers are incredibly ill-prepared by colleges of education, higher education. I don't think we do a good job nationally of giving teachers what they need to know in order to be good reading teachers. My mentor is a national reading researcher and she gives a talk called Reading is Rocket Science. It is a very difficult thing to teach well. So I'll take a minute. I, I trust, you know, I, I won't read this out loud to you, but really we know that by the end of third grade, <clears throat> kids have to have mastered the ability to read words off of the page. Because there's something very uh, conscious that happens in fourth grade. And that is we're moving from K through three, from learning how to read, to grade four and beyond, learning, using reading to learn. So if you haven't learned to read yet, you're not ready to read to learn. So it's in fourth grade that you get your science textbook, you get your social studies textbook, you start doing math word problems, and if you haven't yet learned to read the words off the page, you're in a, in a big fix. But we also know 95% um, of the kids who don't read, learn to read proficiently, it's not because they're neurologically miswired. It's not because they're dyslexic or have some kind of language-based learning difficulty. It's because they're instructional casualties. They have not been given the tools to be able to break the code. And I'll just parenthetically state, as I see everybody scribbling on pads of paper, um, I usually would have handouts for this, um, but I didn't finish this presentation until about 50, 20 minutes ago, 25 minutes ago. But I will have this up on our website, on our homepage of our website, as a PDF tomorrow morning, so you can download this presentation tomorrow morning. Or give me till noon. So anyway, we call them uh, never been taught, NBTs, because they've not been given the instruction needed to break the code. And what we also know is, and I can, you know, I have countless examples of working with people <coughs> over 27 years, that because they can't break the code, there's a shame that these kids hold. They think they're stupid, uh, and they're shameful of that. And it's, it's a really difficult thing if, if you know, your peers are, are reading aloud in class and when it's your turn to be called and you can't do it, uh, it's just, it's a very painful thing. When many of our kids, when they come into Groves um, for the first time, they're looking at the top of their shoes. They're slouched over, their shoulders are slumped, they won't look you in the eye, and it's just it's a really painful thing. And this is a, a, a staggering statistic, and I'll explain why. 
if by